Hey y'all, this is so random, but I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible, but I wanted to go live, you know, just to see if there would be any other, you know, input to what I'm sharing. Sorry, you know, Lord touch my, my voice and stuff. My, my babies at home have been loving on me and then my babies at school been loving on me so i need jesus to touch me <coughs> but i hope everybody's having a great day um and man i have to say i'm always on the go and recently i suppose I've been going out of town but things didn't work out as planned but i tell you thank you jesus for rest do you hear me but anyways like i said I, what um I, i'm a probably wait like one more minute and so forth but i wanted to talk about parenthood childhood you know uh, uh, love identity relationships but solely about parenthood and so forth so you know uh like i said i'm gonna wait a few more minutes and see and stuff if anybody else is gonna join and what have you and stuff but um let's see i don't even know how this stuff works So, uh, yeah, so pretty much what I wanted to do, because it's like a number of things, and it's been on my, my heart for a while, just haven't sat down, you know, and had the discussion. So anyways, what I wanted to talk about, a lot of times you'll see where people, they always associate, hey, Robin, thanks for joining me. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Lord, touch me. But, um. I'm going to try to, like I said, keep it brief, but, you know, at least have a little bit of discussion. So, anyways, like I said, for a while, um, it's been on my heart. But, um, like I had mentioned to my friend, I was like, you know what? I probably do a live on it. You know, I did do a video and stuff, but I was like, I'm going to do a live. But um, pretty much what's been, been on my heart and so forth um, is, you know, uh, parenthood. It's unfortunate that in our our world and our culture you know a lot of children are raised in um single parent homes may it just be you know the moms or the dads and it's because there's more and more moms who are walking away as well you know or they weren't in a position you know to take care of their child and stuff but um i believe you know every child uh needs a mom and a dad and it's unfortunate that that doesn't occur. And of course, due to uh, my beliefs and so forth, I know a lot of it is strategic, you know, from the adversary. You know, um, he wants to destroy, you know, our identity. He wants us to have a false pretense of what love is. Good afternoon, Fashad. I look, you have to join me. So happy to see you. Um, he wants to give us a false, you know, pretense of what a marriage supposed to be. You know, what the role of a husband and a father is supposed to be. What the role of a mother and a father, a role of a mother and um, a wife supposed to be. Blessings to you, sweetie. Thank you so much. So pretty much like I, I'm, I'm sharing, I wanted to just have a discussion, you know, about you know, uh, parenthood and so forth and how our culture, you know, it's almost like it aggressively wants to tear down anything that is pure, anything that is good, anything that really has balance, you know, like, like even like I'm in school too. So I'm a full-time student too. So I work and I'm a mom, you know, and I'm a full-time student and so forth. So it, even in my studies, like I see, you know, the errors as far as like it tries to remove, you know, structure and boundaries. And if you notice, that's pretty much throughout every um, part, you know, within our system, within the school system, um, even like, you know, um, with uh, within the workplaces and so forth, you know, it's gradually, you know, pulling away, you know, uh, that those boundaries and having structure and really having discipline. You know, discipline is a good thing. So the reason why I felt, you know, led to um, have this discussion is due to not only my own experiences, but just things that 
I encounter, you know, with different families, you know, due to the field of work that I do, uh, due to ministry, you know, due to friends, you know, my own children, <coughs> you know, I made a post today, uh, uh, even though if a relationship, you know, comes to an end and so forth, both parents should be on the same, you know, page when it's regarding, you know, the well-being of their child. That's where you show up uh, maturity, really. And where you intentionally wanting to be re respectful, it shouldn't be where there's a competition between the mom and dad. It shouldn't be a comp, you know. It shouldn't be where both of them are like enemies. It shouldn't be where one is uh, addressing ro one role as better than the other, or one role lesser than the other. And that's what we see a lot. And you know, and our children, you know, they suffer in that. Not to mention, you know, how uh, the child support system is set up. You know, it's just a lot of things. And our children are having to sit there and, and deal with that. And I feel like that that's just so unfair. So I wanted to share this, you know, and like um, if anybody, you know, has any questions, feel free to ask questions and so forth. But I'm going to try, like I said, stay up here and, and be brief. You know, if you are a believer, you should be intentional about, you know, keeping peace. That's one thing. You want to be intentional about uh, being consistent, you know, and being in love, you know, doing things in love, uh, doing things, you know, with the, the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. You know, you want to um, be intentional with being respectful. You know, I tell you, it, it amazes me how on the, the ugly side of social media, you know, there's a lot of great stuff, you know, a, a lot of great people that I've met, you know, through uh, social media and so forth. But it's unfortunate when certain, you know, people, they'll show different parts of their life and it's a lie. You know, they'll give a, a, a mislead or a false pretense of what uh, really is going on. And I just want to encourage, you know, I always get compliments and so forth about, you know, my children and so forth and about being a mother. Even when I was away from the Lord, I was always that mother that wanted to protect and um, I wanted to provide a better life, you know, for my for my girls. You know, even so as be, when I resubmitted, you know, recommitted my life to the Lord, you know, that just intensified more. You know, I'm a very ambitious woman, but I know that all my help and strength, it comes from the Lord. That anything that I have, you know, is due to him. It's not, you know, due to Dewan, you know, making something happen. You know, he gives me strength. He gives me direction. He gives me help. And I just want to encourage those that, you know, are single parents and you're in those situations where it may not be the best, you know, circumstances, continue diligently uh, show that respect, you know, do that even if it's not reciprocated. That's why I say, you know, in those no love posts, you know, about how, you know, love, uh, commitment, respect, forgiveness, those are all choices. Those are choices that we individually make. You know, we can't control what somebody else, you know, does and so forth, but we can control our actions. We can control our words. You know, we can control what we do, you know, and a lot of times that's the issue is where we're trying to control, you know, the situation or that person. Hey, Kristen, thank you for joining me. Everybody just jumped in. So uh, like I said, I felt led, like a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, um, that person is bitter or they're doing this. You don't know what goes on behind the scenes. And, you know, even the things that I share on my social media profiles over the years due to, you know, trial and error and also learning a lesson. There's certain things I'm not going to sit there and put on social media, you know, and and one in particular, I'm not going to put on social media as far as, you know, um, something that I don't agree with, you know, that my children's fathers may be doing or something. I'm I'm not going to do that because the reason why I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to give room for the enemy. I'm not going to give room to the devil to sit there and just create a bunch of strife or confusion and so forth or whatever. So I just want to give this seed, you know, to help those when you get up there and, and you are a parent and you're getting up there 
Oh, God bless you, Randy. You get up there and you are negatively talking about, you know, that parent and so forth. Or you're allowing outsiders, you know, to just say uh, horrible things, you know, about that other parent. That is a reflection of you. And it also shows the lack of respect that you have, you know, for that parent. Because at the end of the day, that's your child's, you know, parent. There's no way that you can sit there and, and change that. You know what I mean? So, like I said, you're only responsible for what you do. You're responsible for what you do and what you say. You know, even if it's something, like I said, it's not being reciprocated and you don't like it. But all you're doing is adding, you know, fuel to a, a blaze, especially if you're dealing with someone who's not, you know, um, actively involved in your child's life or someone uh, that is uh, difficult to deal with or someone that doesn't communicate or someone that doesn't have, you know, any relationship with you. Like, it's not making your situation any better, you know? So you want to use wisdom, you know, as far as, you know, with your actions and with your words. And like I said, just understand your role as a mother. Understand your role as a father. Understand what you supposed to be doing regarding your child. Like me personally, I'm I'm a daddy's girl. And I have the kind of daddy, you know what I'm saying, that is going to work, you know, two, three jobs to make sure, you know what I'm saying, that uh, my mom and us had what we needed. However, you know, we live in a day and age now where a lot, some parents, you know, want to do like a bare minimum, but you want to uh, take on it and see great results. You know, my thing is, I feel like every parent knows that their child needs food, clothing, shelter. You know, you know, your child needs, you know, uh, uh, things to, to get through after the day. You know, they need nurturing, they need protection. You know, you know, all of those things. And we have to be honest. Oh, good morning, Scott. Good to see you up here. You know, so, I mean, we have to be um, honest about that instead of getting all defensive, you know. Oh, yes, I most definitely will. And that, too, like, that's another thing, like, with parenthood. You know what I'm saying? As far as, like, our roles, how we interact with our parents, you know, I am 41 years old. And I don't sit up there and... um carry myself like I don't have to sit there and respect my mom and dad you know um in our household in my family you know I let them pretty much freely you know interact you know with uh my children and so forth you know my my parents they helped me greatly I thank God for my mom and dad period you know period because a lot goes on and I thank God that I have them but I know those moments where let's say my mom's correcting me and I may not agree with it. You know, it's not for me to stand in the middle of that floor and be like, you know, I'm an adult and I'm a mom. I'm... You know what DeWine's going to do? She's going to take that right on. Yes, I'm 41. Take that right on to the Lord and I'm going to receive what she's telling me. You know what I'm saying? Because she's my mom. And that's another thing, like in our culture, you know, we don't even value that. We don't value, you know, our parents and stuff. We'll let people sit there and come in, talk to our moms and dads any kind of way, or we think we can talk to them any kind of way, especially if you are a parent that is going to harvest within, you, you know, your children, you know, that reap what you sow is no joke. It's in everything that we do in everything that we do. You know, it's going to bring a harvest, period. You know, so there's no way there's no way of getting around that. Honor, honor your mom and daddy, you know. Um, and, and then those things where it's very, very strenuous relationships, difficult relationships, you give it to Jesus. Those are things you go to the Lord, you know. There's things that, for example, my oldest daughter, you know, goes through that I've never went through when I was her age. All I can do is tell her, you know, you need to give that to Jesus. Don't you carry that? You know, you give that to Jesus. So I promise you, the Lord will give you strength in those kind of situations. Um, Bexie, I hope I'm pronouncing your right, your name right, you know, and he'll give you um, strength to endure that. And really, I'm another example, I remember when I was going through... Um, I was in my marriage and it was a bad marriage. And I remember the Lord, he, he was helping me to love my husband. Even though my husband wasn't loving me, he was helping me to love my husband. You know, that's possible. 
That's the same thing. So I believe if God can help me, you know, love somebody that wasn't loving me, you know what I'm saying? He can definitely do that, you know, with our situations with, you know, family members. Because, you know, sometimes in family, you know, sometimes we can say whatever comes off the top of our head and not keep in consideration, you know, how we may be hurting somebody, you know, and we need to be mindful of that. Yes, Scott, I am. <laughs> I am. So, um, but like I said, I, I wanted to really address those areas where, I, like I said, it's easy for somebody to sit there and say, you know, such and such is, is better, such and such is this, such and such is that. And you're not in the situation. You don't know what's going on. And then, uh, and not to mention that you're not in that situation. It's clear that you have no empathy. You have no compassion. But what if that was you? What if that was your loved one? Is that the same response? Is that the same advice that you're going to give to somebody when they're discussing issues? You know, well, she won't let me see my son or he won't let me see my daughter or, you know, she's that. Or I tell you, intentionally, intentionally make a point where you two are a team, regardless that you are, are no longer together, intentionally choose to respect each other. And I tell you, the Bible tells us he commands us to love and he commands us to forgive. But honey, I he, he helps me. But one thing I don't do, I'm not no doormat. That's what I don't do. I'm going to love you. I'm going I'm to forgive. I'm going to do all that. I'm going to walk in peace. I'm going to do all that by the strength of the Lord. But what I'm not going to do is sit there and and be somebody's, you know, doormat so they can just sit there and just handle myself or my children any kind of way. You know, that's not what God's asking us to do either. So you want to go to him, ask for clarity, ask for wisdom. But like I said, he puts a, a great emphasis on, you know, being peacemakers. You don't want to be just creating a bunch of drama, you know, and strife and stuff. A lot of stuff that we go through, it could be all prevented if we had shut our mouth. You know, or if we didn't say a certain thing, you know, and a lot of times we do stuff or we say stuff and then we're sitting back wondering like, oh, I can't believe they're mad or I can't believe they did this. You can't control how somebody reacts. You can't control how somebody responds, but you can control you, you know. Yeah. Hey, absolutely. Absolutely, Bexie. That's right. He gives us strength and, and, and I, I can't stress that enough. I know only God did that. Only God can do that. So, and I, and that's why I tell, you know, my children and anybody else, you ask God to help you, you know, during those situations. Because I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy, you know. So, like I said, um, I just wanted to jump up here and share that tidbit. Because, like I said, I, I shared a post earlier today, you know, about that childhood is so brief. It's so brief. And children are sponges. You know, I don't know about anybody else's kids, but my kids, they pay attention to what I be doing. They pay attention to what I be saying. And even like with the different things, like people have to keep in mind, like when you're no longer together, however you're treating, you know, that other parent, you know, that it takes a toll on your child. You know, there's people that die from, you know, um, heartache. There's people that, that, are plumb out of their head due to emotional stress. And a lot of time is it, it has circumstances that deal with somebody who doesn't give them support. Somebody who's just, you know, just driven to just drive them, you know, um, into the ground because they're carrying, you know, let's say, un, you know, resentment or unforgiveness and so forth. But like I said, if you're a, a mother or a father, and I, I firmly believe like when I stand before the Lord, he's going to hold me accountable for my Naomi and my Hannah. You know what I'm saying? He's going to hold me accountable for the kind of life that I lived in front of front of them. He's going to hold me accountable for what, you know, how I led my life before them and what I taught them. And I think sometimes some of us, we don't want to take on that kind of responsibility, but that that is the issue. There's no way of sitting there getting around that. And I feel like the quicker somebody learns how to take a, be accountable and take responsibility for your, yourself, some things would change. You won't be sitting back watching what such and such is doing. You're going to be like, well, what am I doing? And it also removes that, that platform, like I said, of, bl of blame and making excuses. You know, blame and making excuses, it prevents growth. It prevents you from learning the lesson. And it also prevents you from finding a resolution because you're so stuck on, like, I can't believe they're doing this. And also complaining. 
you know, complaining about the situation, complaining and worrying. Take that mess to the Lord. Take that mess to the Lord. And like I said, our children, they watch what we say. They watch what we do. And even the things that I teach my daughters, I know more, they look at more or less what I do and how I carry myself. You know, I haven't always sit there and, and serve the Lord. And I've made some some very poor, you know, choices and, and decisions, you know, in my past and so forth. But I take that stuff to the Lord. You know, I want my, my children, you know, to have the tools that they need. I don't want my babies to be wounded and broken adults, you know. Like my, my oldest, she just recently turned 18. And I know there's some things, you know, that she's been through that I know the, that the Lord, only God can help her, you know, get through those things. And it's hard sitting back, you know, looking at that, you know, as a parent when you can't fix it. But when I see stuff where people, you know, just encourage, like you'll see somebody, let's say it'd be somebody that don't even see their kids, don't even talk to their kids. And it'll be some, and it's usually some woman, she'll come up there and she'll be in the comments say, you're such an amazing dad. Why do we do that? Why? Why do we do that? Or um, you'll see somebody, you know, they'll put up, you know, uh, pictures of their family and so forth or whatever. But that man could be cheating on his wife or beating her. Like, we have to be mindful of those kind of things and stuff. I stress to my children, character matters. Don't get caught up with somebody's looks and a great personality. Character matters at the end of the day. It tells you everything, honey. It, it, it lets you know the real you and so forth. So when you see that that, that real person, uh, Maya Angelou, she has this a quote, and I love it. You know, when somebody shows you themselves the first time, believe them. Believe them the first time. When they show you their true self, believe them the first time. And that's what a lot of us need to sit there and do and still forgive quickly and still treat them with love and so forth but don't be sitting there just making excuses for you know foolishness you know it's okay to say something is wrong it's okay to sit there and say that that's not okay instead of kind of like adapting to a situation that's dysfunctional and the reason why i say that is because we see so many kids like i live in kentucky you know what i mean i live in kentucky and I think about how uh, our laws and stuff are like are here, you know, for our children. Like we are the uh, the second in the nation that has uh, issues with child abuse and neglect, you know, and sexual abuse. That's where we're at. And I tell you, when we go up into the courtroom and stuff, I mean, you always see people sitting there complaining about, you know, child support and share time and father's rights and mothers you know this bit it's a mess but you know what i've observed and even what i've experienced you know you go in there and there's some judges that care and there's some that don't you know i I strongly feel like you know that they need to make some adjustments with those kind of things especially when it's someone who really don't have the tools or really don't really know how to be a parent you know, there's fathers that'll go up in there. They they don't even have a lease. They don't even have that name on a lease. But they go in there talking about, you know, I care about my child. How? And you don't have a place to live. You don't think anything is wrong with that? Or mothers, you know what I'm saying, where they're just bringing anybody and everybody into their home, you know, placing their daughter or, or their sons, you know, in harm's way and stuff. And you don't think that matters, sweetheart? That does. That does. That impacts your child. I feel like when you become a parent, it's no longer about you. And that's the same thing way we love. When you love, it's not about you. It's selfless. You know, love is patient. Love is kind. You know, I believe the definition of what the Bible says, you know, love is. Period. And and if, and if it's not representing that, honey, I guard. I guard myself and I guard my babies. You know? That's that's how I, I, I work, but I, I just, I really, really would love for more people, more single parents to really focus on that bigger picture, and that's the well-being of your child, of wanting to give them every tool to be the best adult that they can be in this world, you know? 
it shouldn't be where, you know, folk are, are enemies. And a lot of times, like I said, what happens is people get involved, get in other relationships, and somebody else is coming into the picture, and they deciding what's going to go and what's going to happen, insecurities and so forth. I tell you, your child matters. Your child's well-being matters. And you want to be that parent that's making sure that you have a whole, you know, child. You don't want to be that parent where you're missing out you know, uh, watching your child grow or not being a part of part of their growth, you know? So I just want to encourage us love intentionally, love intentionally forgive and use wisdom, pursue peace, you know, try to find that resolution, but, uh, I'm gonna get up off of here. I've been up here for longer than I expected and stuff, but I hope y'all have an amazing, amazing day. And for those that join me, I appreciate it. The ones that uh, listen to it afterwards, I hope you find some nuggets and you apply it, you know, to your life. Hey, bruh, I'm about to get up off of here. Just talking about, you know, parenthood and so forth and having more compassion, you know, having more empathy, you know, really wanted to find some answers and being effective, you know, as parents and stuff. And I tell you, uh, the Lord helps me. I look at, you know, everything that I am and everything with my, my children is due to the Lord. I take no credit for that. That's due to my Jesus. I mean, he's placed some amazing men and women, you know, in their lives. I thank God for my mom. And I, I think about people who don't have that kind of support. You know, that affects your kid, you know, and then to go into a court system and they're not really addressing the root of the problem. You know, they're really just wasting time, wasting time and money. You know, um, there's things that I think about, you know, uh, when things are, are going on within that system and stuff. And there's no reason for it for it to not be more effective, you know, but I feel like it, as moms and dads you really care about your children and your child you're going to do everything that you can you know for the best interest of your child you're going to look at the bigger picture period you're not just going to come from a, a selfish you know a position and, and if you are hurting get healing you know because if, if you don't get that healing you can't help your babies you can't give your babies what you don't have so if you don't have love not going to be able to teach that to your kids. You're not going to be able to give that to your kids. You know, I even told my daughter, there's no way to even respect folk without love. You have to have love in order to even do that. If you, if someone is disrespectful, they lack love. Come on, let's, let's get that together. And, and like I said, be, be intentional with that. I hope y'all have a great day. I appreciate y'all listening to me. Blessings.